Okay, morning everyone. Thanks for coming. I know it's Friday, uh, Friday morning, the day after the party. There's a, a session slot that you want. Um, <laughs> but thanks everyone for coming. Um, my name is uh, Steve Nesbitt. I'm a business productivity technical specialist from the UK and I work in our um, EPG, which is the sort of top end, larger customer end of, of UK business. And um, today's session is really you know, quite short. It's only 20 minutes. Um, which is not a lot of time to cover everything that's on that very long title there. But ultimately, we're looking at, at really just talking about modernizing the way that desktops are pushed out into organizations with some of the newer technology from Microsoft primarily uh, delivered out the cloud. So the idea of the, the session is to really help you get an understanding of where desktop computing is going from a Microsoft perspective and show how Office 365 Windows 10 and EMS can help support that vision in a way that works better together. Um, the session is actually broken in half due to the sort of scheduling. And so there was an earlier version of this where we focused primarily on what a user would see. So productivity benefits from a user's perspective. And I'll go into a little bit of that towards the end in terms of what you, what you missed if you weren't able to be at that session. But today we're looking at the administration view at the bottom. So really understanding how, um, in effect, you know, as an administrator or as an IT pro within an organization, what I need to be aware of if I'm going to think about deploying these technologies. Just bear with me. So the first question really is around, you know, what, is, what does cloud mean for desktop? And really, it's talking about from a connected perspective and we're not talking about connected as in just connected to the internet obviously PCs have been able to do that for quite some time and that's nothing new what we're talking about is connection is connecting in such a way that it removes the need for users to have any downtime during that connection we want to establish single sign-on between cloud-based and on-premised applications um, and really from a user's perspective we don't want them to have to worry about it too much and, and that's something that we're obviously very keen to drive with uh, our Azure Active Directory platform, which obviously I'm sure you all know provides the authentication layer for Office 365 and enterprise mobility. Secondly, we, we're looking at this, this move from stateful to stateless devices. And by which I mean, we're moving away from a world where the device itself was the, pe was the thing that was licensed. The device had Office, okay? and you've licensed it uh, accordingly. In the more modern world, what we're looking at here is really that I am licensed. And if I need to have four or five, six, 10 different devices to do my job, well, so be it. And if those happen to be PCs, Macs, Android tablets, iPads, iPhones, whatever they might be, then we don't want to penalize users for the choice of that device. And, so, and also, what we want to be able to do is enable you to take your preferences, your settings, and documents, and the history of those documents between you as you move from devices. So if I start on one device edit editing a document, and then I move to another, say from a desktop to a phone while I'm traveling, those changes should go along with me, and I should continue in a seamless manner. And finally, something that we'll look at here today as well is the pace of change and how we're moving away from large drops of functionality every two, three, four years, whatever it might be across Windows and Office in particular, and moving to something that is very much more dr driven at a higher speed cadence. So those features can come out um, to, to the IT or to the organization a lot quicker. The big um, challenge in, in organizations a lot of the time is IT departments seem to be reticent in some ways to deliver fast moving change but also frustrated that they can't change things more quickly. And it's a real sort of seesaw of where you sort of end up on, on that, uh, on that uh, in the, re with regards to that question. But ultimately, the business side of the conversation is what's driving the need for new functionality. They want to be able to get this stuff out quicker. So what do you need for a, for a great desktop solution? Obviously, from our perspective, you know, Windows 10, Office 365, and Enterprise Mobility. But we're starting to have those conversations building up from the device up to the productivity stack and then the security and management around that. So it was fair to say that you know, in the past, when we, I first started talking about Office 365, that's pretty much all I would talk about. I would talk about Exchange Online, SharePoint Online, and you know, maybe touch into the hybrid scenarios as well with SharePoint on-premise in particular. Now, it's extremely challenging to have a conversation with an organization where if you don't have a more 
uh, a more broad view of the technologies that are supporting Office 365. And that can be from Azure's perspective, from a security and management point of view with EMS, or the desktop itself and how those things pull together. So one thing that we talk about as an example of this, and it's only one example, a session that we have um, a lot of the time in the UK, which, you know, hands up if you've had something similar here in, in the US, but ultimately from a security perspective, we talk about Office 365 as just one part of a component of a secure platform. So we talk about, and some of these things we'll talk about a little bit later, like uh, advanced email protection, for example, but we have to include some of the other security features from other parts of the platform as well. So we can have an end-to-end -end life cycle of the security around this particular piece of content, whether that's a file, whether it's an email, whatever else it might be. Has anybody here had this kind of session around security? Okay, so it's something that's not, I'm not gonna say it's new because I don't know how often Microsoft have been doing it, but it's certainly relatively new in the UK, but it's something that we've delivered to particularly the security departments in major organizations, and it's gone down extremely well. And what it's enabled you to do, or what it's enabled the IT teams within those organizations to do, is help make a business case about how moving to the cloud can actually increase the security of their organization. Move that conversation away from, you know, the cloud equals somehow giving up control and introducing risk to actually what's more, what's more realistic, which is that the cloud can actually help secure your, your data and your information. There's a ton of sessions this week on, on this. I went to a great one yesterday around uh, managing, you know, and securing Office 365. So that's just something to be aware of. And, you know, when you get back to your companies, maybe start talking to your Microsoft reps about how you can have similar sessions delivered to yourself. You obviously have access to this deck and recording as well, so you, know, you can maybe use those internally. So what we're really talking about today in this admin view section is not actually the benefits of a connected platform for a user. It's more around how an administrator would deliver that to the company and the various different things to think about. Now, we are not going to get, unfortunately, today a chance to talk about all of these things in any sort of depth. When you've got a 20-minute session, you either talk about one thing or you talk about a lot of things. And I've chosen to talk about a lot of things. But ultimately, the idea of this is to take some of these thoughts away and start to think about how they might fit within your organization. And overall, what's your strategy to take you know, from whatever infrastructure you have at the moment to something that's a more connected platform? One of the challenges we see with organizations is very much that they've you know, potentially got multiple different levels of the same product. So they've got Exchange 2010 and 2013. They've got Office in three different versions. They've got various versions of SharePoint running around. You know, and then they've got third-party applications for security and management and mobile device management. And it's all quite complex. Moving to something Microsoft-based, which updates at cadence that makes sense within the platform, is one way of making a jump to something that's a lot more scalable and a lot more future-proof in terms of its updating and management. So let's just move a little bit through these uh, uh, and you know we can obviously talk about, um, about them in a little bit more depth offline, but the first one I want to just talk about is um, upgrade analytics and some of the capabilities that we have in the platform that can help you move from where you are today to a cloud-based uh, future. So the first one that we talk about very quickly is uh, Windows Upgrade Analytics. Um, effectively, this is a solution to ba uh, based on the telemetry that Microsoft gathers uh, from Windows um, installations. And you are able, by using the Operation Management Suite, to effectively tag your um, telemetry against your organization. And there's a whole lot of information around how we manage privacy in that, in that scenario. Now, the idea of this really is it gives you insights into drivers and app compat issues potentially, it gives you the ability to search and drill down and identify the PCs within your organization that are okay to move to the latest build of Windows 10. So it's really giving you a view on something that in, in a lot of cases in my experience has been something that's a little bit difficult to, to pin down, which is can we move to Windows 10? I'm not sure. Will this work? Will that work? I'm not sure. And getting st st supportability statements from third-party vendors can be a challenge. Okay? And so this is one way of identifying and moving, and moving those particular um, users uh, to, to a new OS platform. As a partner to that, we also have Office Telemetry. I'm going to need to switch in a second. 
Uh, just two seconds. Um, it's assuming my PC is going to work. Yeah. Um, and office telemetry uh, provides, oh, not quite yet, sorry. sorry. <laughs> I'll tell you. That's Windows Hello. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, office telemetry um, gives you the ability to have a similar look, look and view into what's happening from an office perspective in your organization. So what is office telemetry and how does it work? Well, with clients that are 2013 and up, office telemetry is actually delivered automatically as part of the office client. So you have that agent based into the office product. And really what happens is there is a number of um, areas that you just need to set up. You need a database to store the service and you need to go through a, a setup process to enable telemetry uh, data to flow from those office, uh, those office clients into your telemetry dashboard, which I'll show you in a second. And you can use group policy to enable that, uh, that telemetry collection. With, um, there you go, what an exciting graphic as it moves forward through the, uh, through the various different areas. With older Office clients, so that's 2010 and below, you actually have to deploy a telemetry agent to those, and you can do that through System Center or you know, any of the other management uh, scenario. But ultimately, either way, we have a situation where we move you know, from one point to another. Now let me just um, switch machines here. I will do, sorry. When it wakes up. Oh, come on. There we go. Right, if you want to switch now. So, what does that actually look like? Well, it looks like this, the output of, of an office telemetry report. And really, it's just an Excel spreadsheet that's giving me an indication of what I have um, in my organization from an office version perspective. And if I go through the various tabs at the bottom, I can see the documents that are in the most recently viewed list. It's not only going to be all documents, and we can set, and I can never say this word, but obfuscation, where we can actually remove the name, uh, the, the full name of the files for privacy reasons as well. But I can start to see the files that have been used, and I can also start to see the solutions and other add-ins that are potentially being used, how often they're being used, and whether there's any sort of um, problems with those. And the idea of this really is to go through and um, identify which of these add-ins, which of these documents are potentially going to cause an issue when we upgrade to the latest version of Office 365 Pro Plus, which is obviously the 2016 track. Let me switch back. So just when we switch back, this is an example of, uh, which I borrowed from our own internal IT team, um, which is how they're using those insights to help monitor and manage the Office builds in Microsoft, which bear in mind has 100,000 plus employees, you know, running Office 365 Pro Plus. And, you know, we have add-ins and macros and third-party things as well to deal with. And so these things are, are, you know, we are actually using Office telemetry in order to do that. If there's one takeaway from this session that I would in encourage everyone to do, and this is biased because I'm part of the Office group, is to go away and start thinking about using telemetry to start getting a better understanding of what's happening with Office in your environment. I can't talk about the future about this because I've been told that I can't, but ultimately there's going to be a lot of work in investment into making this clearer and putting, making the insights that this delivers uh, more valuable to the user. So if we move on from upgrade analytics, and I'm going to skip over this really quickly because we, we don't have a huge amount of time, we've started to move away from um, passwords in general being you know, the de facto view of how we authenticate and access our devices. And Windows Hello for Business is now a way of actually changing our signing model for users away from having to remember and change complex passwords to using biometrics to add in uh, that security. So I can sign in with my face, I can sign in with a fingerprint, I can sign in you know, on multiple different uh, ways, assuming that the hardware such as my Surface here actually supports that. So that's something else to consider. It's a useful service and something that's part of, of Windows 10. The second piece as well, and I'll just um, hopefully get this to play, is multi-factor authentication. Okay? And this is something that's really forming a cornerstone of our conditional access policy as well. So when you, whether you're AD joining a device, your Azure AD joining a device, sorry, uh, whether you're looking to log on to SharePoint Online, whether you're doing that from out, you know, outside the corporate network, we have the ability to trigger multi-factor authentication. Is anyone using this internally? OK, 
okay. So multi-factor authentication from our perspective uses the phone, the mobile phone as a second factor of authentication. And what I thought it'd be just interesting to um, see how this runs. So what's happened here is I've set uh, Garrett here up to uh, be you know, triggered for multi-factor authentication. So he's logged into the Office 365 portal. And what's basically happened is it's set up a first time challenge saying, you need to set up multi-factor authentication. We need you to have this level of enhanced security. So he's taken a couple of choices there. There was a phone call, a text message, but I think Garrett goes for the mobile app. And then really he's gonna click setup and it's gonna help him configure the mobile application in a second. It's the issue with videos, is sometimes you've realized how much time you've given in there. He's then gonna get a prompt basically to set up his mobile phone as a second factor of authentication. Let's see if we can get this running. And what he's got here is a QR code that he can scan actually with his device, which will basically manage and add this security into the Azure Authenticator app, which in this case has been downloaded to his Windows phone. So I don't know what's wrong with the screen. And once he goes through that process and authenticates, in this case, he's going to actually have to find it and install it. But I thought it might be quite interesting to, uh, to see where this actually um, looked in the, uh, in the grand scheme of things. He's going to then download and install that application. And this is, a, this is available on iOS and Android devices as well, so it's not just Windows Phone. And once he goes in, he can scan that barcode. He can then add that and get authenticated directly in. And all that will happen from his perspective, when he goes up and scans his barcode, is he'll just get triggered through. That will be accepted. And then in the future, when he gets that Office 365 prompt, he'll get a, a, an, app an app notification push on his device. He'll put in a password, and he'll be allowed seamless access in. As I said before, one of the great things about this is you can set it around IP ranges. So it's, it's only uh, accesses for example, when you're off network. So, for example, I want to log into my domain, I get a phone call, I have to put in a pin, and there we go. Excuse me. So, again, I'm kind of running out of time here. Um, one other thing that we, we're looking at as well is, is the ability to... Um, protect sensitive information within our organization. There's a couple of ways that we can do that. In the first of these videos, I actually talked about mobile application management. Um, but actually, what I'm going to show here is something different, which is called Azure Information Protection. And what this is basically is giving me the ability to classify documentation either manually or automatically within the Office products themselves. And that includes Outlook, but I'm using Word as an example here. And so what I've been able to do is in the back end of Azure is set up a bunch of different um, classification settings that I can use in order to, for my, uh, to manage my document. And I can go through and I can select secret, but I can make secret more than one thing. And obviously you'll have to be able to customize these in terms of your uh, particular organization. So basically I'm saying here, this is all company, this is all group, but actually in my scenario, Imagining this is a marketing document, we've then got a, a, a policy called agents in review. Now, when I, when I apply that, what happens is not only does it change the security around the document, it actually automatically applies rights protection to that document. So anyone outside the particular group that authored it now only has view rights to that document. And it doesn't matter whether I send it over email, it doesn't matter whether I, you know, it's, it's opened anywhere in the world, only people who have authorization to that file can open it. And that's something really very powerful. Now, if we just, um, bear with me a second, we'll just switch machines. If we can just switch over, yeah, if you don't mind. I can show you very quickly the actual back end creation of this. So you can see that in the Azure information portal here, I've got a bunch of different uh, classifications that I've created. And if I go into one, for example, what it's going to do is just going to knock the second blade on there. And there's a whole bunch of things I can do. I can add a tool tip. I can say here that actually this is going to get, then apply a particular rights management profile that I've also created in Azure as well. So it's automating that. I can also do things like add uh, header and footer information as well. 
Now, there is some ability to automate this as well. So out of the box, there's some templates around credit cards and things like that, where if a credit card is inserted within the document, classification will automatically change. And one of the nice feature is, if I have to reduce a classification from agency review back down to internal, that will actually reduce the, uh, will need a justification, which IT can obviously monitor. Okay, go back. Okay. Bear with me. I don't know what's going on here now. I've lost my presentation completely. Just bear with me a second. Okay, I, I am aware that we're running out of uh, time, by the way. <laughs> extremely quickly. So a um, couple more things just very quickly that I want to touch on is, you know, we're moving back from protection against threats. We're looking at something called uh, safe attachments, safe links, which is part of the E5 bundle for Office 365. And one of the products in here is, is advanced threat protection. And advanced threat protection gives you two separate um, features within protection of email. The first being safe attachments, which is your zero day exploit protection. And what this basically does is we run the attachments of your emails in a sandbox VM and we look for various uh, types of uh, behavior that are perhaps not, not particularly great, such as trying to write to the registry and, and other features like that. And if we see that, we will quarantine and ultimately delete the email. And so this protects against um, um, threats that haven't got a signature base that can already be detected. And then the second piece is then safe links as well. And safe links is really for more phishing type attacks where a URL is placed within uh, an email, someone clicks on that URL and they're taken to a compromised site where, they, where malware is, is installed. What we do here is we actually rewrite the user um, URLs at time of click and ultimately check them against our reputation lists. Um, this is really useful to protect against those sort of spear phishing and whaling type, uh, type threats. And finally, because I know we're running out of time and it's something that I do want to do want to touch on quickly, the final pieces as well and something we talked about at, um, at the beginning of this is really about um, faster updating. And so one of the things that I really encourage you to do is if you haven't spent time on this is to take a look at the various different branches for Windows as a service and you know, get an idea of which of these branches is going to be most suitable for what parts of your organization. So we go from the insider branch to current branch, and then where we expect the majority of users to be, which is current branch for business. And finally, we also have long-term servicing branch where changes just basically don't happen at the same cadence. So I would definitely spend some time drilling into the branches for Windows um, and understanding which parts of your organization can be put onto which uh, of these branches and at what cadence. And ultimately, we have the same thing for Office Now as well. So Office 365 Pro Plus has a bunch of channels where you can build, the, you can get those builds from our content delivery network. We have the current channel, which is monthly feature and security updates delivered directly from the cloud, directly to PCs. And you can either automate that through you know, various different policies, or you can take these builds and, and push them out yourself. We also have the deferred channel build, which effectively gives you a a point in time snapshot of a particular build, in this case October, but gives you some time to test that build within your own organization before deploying it out to the user base. And finally, we have the first release for, de for deferred channel, which as you might expect is the, um, the, the preview, if you like, of the, of the build that's been uh, pushed out in four months time. And so within your organization, we'd expect you to have a multiple different um, versions of Office potentially running. But the deferred channel build is the one that we'd expect to be covering the majority of your organization. But maybe IT, a few pilot users, maybe some of the, the guys from straight out of university, maybe they get on the, the latest current channel builds and you can keep an idea of what's coming down the line. So again, we're always pushing time, I'm afraid, with these sessions. There's extreme, you know, huge amounts to talk about and not a lot of time. The other side of this session is the user experience, which I delivered on Wednesday. That will at some point be available online, so you can see the other side of, of some of the, the areas that we talked about. But ultimately, those, um, those features were uh, on the screen here, and these are what we, what we talked about in that session, which was Azure Active Directory Join, 
more examples of mobile application management, which is um, basically managing and controlling the applications themselves on an iPad. And that's a really key security component. I can't stress that enough. We also looked at built-in cloud storage within Windows 10 and the OneDrive Sync client, being able to cloud connect your devices extremely easily and, and bring your, device, your files down locally for sync. We talked about Cortana integration, and finally we talked about better collaboration scenarios. In actual fact, I wasn't able to cover as many of those as I would have liked, and hopefully I'll get a chance to come and do this presentation again. Um, like I said, if you do get time to, um, to view it, then that's the name of the session. Um, my contact information is at the bottom there. Um, I don't have a business card. Um, we just don't seem to do them anymore. But I'm more than happy to be uh, emailed, and also you can connect to me on LinkedIn. Um, since I joined Microsoft, my LinkedIn profile has gone quite high, so I do have quite a lot of people following me, so it's probably not a bad idea. Um, please, please feel free to contact me there. And finally, it would be really, really great for me, as this is my first Ignite experience, to uh, evaluate the session. Uh, let me know what you think, if there's any improvements. Again, I apologize for the short uh, nature of this. Ideally, I would have had a lot longer to talk about these topics, but um, the only final thing I'll, I'll leave you on is then there's a bunch of uh, Office-based uh, track sessions, including one that I did on Office for Mac, which was uh, done on Wednesday, um, as well as System Center deploying Office 2016. So if you want to take some of the Office uh, concepts we talked about there, particularly the branches, how to deploy it on mobile devices, how to deploy it uh, in a manageable way on desktop, then these are a, a great number of sessions. There's also good ones here on Citrix and virtualization as well as System Center. So with that, I'll say thank you very much and have a great day. Cheers.